The lens that I thought I'd take with me today on my little walk around Sutton Park is the XF 16mm 1.4. Every clip will be with that lens. This intro, for example, is with the lens wide open on board mics. Now, this is one of the best lenses Fujifilm have made, but it's not particularly designed for vloggers or video shooters like myself even. But I thought, you know, if you've got it, why not give it a try? So we're gonna go through a few of the pros and cons and see if it's something that we can rely on for a little bit of video shooting, maybe vlog shooting. So I suppose I've gotta hold it in front of me like this and all that nonsense. The first con, negative for me, is it doesn't have OIS. And I'm using the T4 now, which is hopefully saving any chance we have <laughs> of squeezing a video out of this test. I'll put it up anyway. I do fear the edges are gonna be quite wobbly, but yeah, I do like having that F1.4 background though. And I know I don't walk around like this that much. I've got it almost as far out as I can hold it. I think it's a good focal length. Hmm. Another negative for me is the weight of the lens. Now I don't hold it out like this for any particularly long periods of time, so it's not a deal breaker, but the closest alternative, maybe the 16mm f 2.8, yeah. It's a lot smaller, a lot lighter. There's other pros to that too, which we might get onto in a little bit, but yeah, this one isn't an all day holdout at arm's length as I am right now with this Joby Gorilla Pod. Definitely should have wore more appropriate footwear for this. It's very muddy. The things I do in the name of testing. What is wrong with me? Another negative that you hear about a lot is the autofocus motor noise. Now outdoors, you're not gonna notice it. Most video shooters and vloggers will use an external mic, you know, something popped on the top of the camera just to give you a much better sound anyway, you know, but I'm gonna take the mic out now so you can just hear if you can hear, I don't think you will, because it's quite busy today. I've had to get into the middle of this forest a little bit more to get away from the noise. And you can hear the nature, so I don't think the autofocus noise is a big deal. But if you need to double check, go to the intro, which was inside the car and was with the onboard mics, which should give you a bit of a better idea. But then it didn't move that much either. Let me just take the mic out. Onboard mics then. I don't think you're gonna notice. If I move in, we can test the focus as well, which we'll talk about in a moment. Another possible negative, and it's something the lens isn't really designed for, is face tracking. Now I'm looking now and I can see it's on my eye, but if I move out of the way a bit, I think it's getting a little bit confused. I don't even think it's got me there. Let's come in. It says it's got me, but I'm not sure if the focus is on me. <sighs> For moving around, I think this is one where I need to have my shades on and I can be looking at the screen when you think I'm looking at you, which is something a lot of YouTubers do a lot. I've done it occasionally, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Again, I think the F2.8 16 mil trumps this lens. It's more modern, it's more designed for hybrid shooting. But once you get it, it's fine. I suppose this isn't a particularly clear scene to put it to the test. Well, it is a test, isn't it? Anyway, we're waffling and at least it stays on me. I think it's on me now. Maybe it's got used to the scene a bit. Maybe there is something cleverer going on inside this little Fuji. <laughs> Again, using it on the T4 if you missed the intro, which you shouldn't have. If you already own this beautiful lens, don't write it off just yet. I think we're a bit stuck. <laughs> this is a little bit awkward. Whoa, definitely not prepared for this. I think it might be a little bit extra useful to 
you know, dabble a little bit in video shooting, even random stuff like this if you feel like it. We all know the image quality of this lens is amazing. There are those that moan a little bit about the distortion, but for video shooting, especially this kind of stuff, it's not a big deal at all, is it? I mean, look at this. We're wide open, I think. We're wide, no, we're almost wide open. Yeah, ISO 160. I think it just renders things so nice and <laughs> sound even more out of breath than before. An obvious win for this lens is the aperture, the extra light that you can get in, which isn't necessarily a big deal if you're in a brighter country than this, but even on this kind of gray overcast day where I've got a lot of shrubbery and leaves and trees and all sorts of stuff around, I'm still wishing I brought <laughs> an ND filter. But anyway, this is it, wide open. A few of the clips I've had to stop down just a touch, annoyingly. Another big tick in the pros column is the weather resistance, which doesn't normally bother me, but as I started my walk in this park, it did start to rain, which it wasn't supposed to do, but this is the UK and anything can happen at any time. So the weather resistance just let me happily walk with my T4 out with the lens on and I don't know if the road mic <laughs> took a bit of a beating but we seem to be still getting a mic signal. Yeah, very happy with that. Nice big tick or note in the pros column, which I was gonna do, but I clearly haven't done. Also, I appreciate this is very random, but you know how it is. There's other tests you could do to see how this works out in video. There's a lot of other video shooting techniques, methods, scenarios, and so on. But I just wanted to give myself a little bit of an idea, something to play back later and think, do I really want to take that with me for that little travel or that day out or something? As it stands, I'm currently holding it without the Joby. Let's hold it with the, well, I've mangled the Joby a bit, so I'm not going to get the full stretch. There you go, full stretch. Obviously a little less stable, but the IBIS seems to be doing a decent little number. I could put this on as well, but hmm, that'll crop in. And this lens is bordering on too tight for what I would want to do with it. Hmm. Also, I've finally been able to go to ISO 250 <laughs> to stay wide open, finally. Look, that didn't tell you anything, did it? And I nearly got mauled by a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make me extra shaky. Please help me, Mr. Ibis. <laughs> also, don't seem to be getting that face detection box back again. Do I need to twiggle it? Twiggle it, toggle it on and off again? Oh, look, it's come back now I've spoken about it. Hmm, weird. I'm off home to see how these clips turned out. I've had a little playback on the camera. It's not the same, of course. I just want to say to that person that's thinking about commenting about my heavy breathing, <laughs> I'm not unfit, but I do have asthma, which I take inhalers for daily, which actually tomorrow I need to go and renew. Um, it's really cold and it had started to rain and I do appreciate it was a little bit loud. <laughs> we may not have even included the clips. <laughs> But yeah, calm down. It's just asthma. What has it got to do with anything, really? Be nice, people. I can hear it. Yeah. As we said, you're going to be using external mics for the most part anyway, but... It is an older focusing system in the lens. Doesn't seem to be too bad, though. I'm getting much better face detection now than I was in some of those outdoor scenes. But this is a lot easier for the camera to spot me face. Oh man. Yeah, let's get in. If you already own it, give it a try. See how you get on, post some examples and have a bit of fun with it. If you're still looking for a lens to use in this kind of vlog, random video shooting sort of style, you might wanna look elsewhere perhaps it does have limitations. You can work around them and get nice results. But for me, there are more ideal lenses for that purpose, like the 16mm f 2.8 that we already mentioned and the 
forthcoming Viltrox 13 mil f 1.4 potentially I've got no information about the size of or anything but I like the sound of the focal length the aperture and from the other Viltrox lenses that came out I think could work well for your random run and gun sort of video work especially on the cheap but as I say got zero details about that maybe by the time this is published we'll have a little bit more but yeah 16 mil f 1.4 as amazing as it is definitely not my first choice now for video work static stuff like this it's less important and for manual shooters which we didn't focus on in the test because that's not really what i was interested in for that kind of shooting manual shooters will find that a lot of the problems that i was having in the tests down to water focus face tracking and so on those problems are eliminated so yeah manual focus shooters big thumbs up you might want to carry on using this lens for even your more random stuff as we said before it can be quite a personal thing ideally you'll work with what you've got until you can't work with it anymore and you need to buy something or upgrade to something else you know try and squeeze the juice out of the gear that you already own but yeah those are the random tests and me waffling <laughs> along the way to give us time to see how the lens fared beautiful lens just obviously not designed for this sort of stuff but but still quite usable in certain circumstances i mean this is all right face tracking is doing well image looks nice yeah well nice as can be anyway let us know in the comments below what you shoot with for random video stuff there are a lot of options out there so let's hear about your setups make sure to subscribe and i'll see you very soon